What's up guys and welcome back to a new episode about access modifiers. We talked about access modifiers a little bit in the previous episode, but this is a pretty important topic in object-oriented programming. When creating methods or properties inside our class, we need to add access modifiers to them in order to control the accessibility of them. So let me remove the define a class comment and let's set the access modifiers equal to the tree that I want to show you, which is public, private, and protected. Whenever you give your property or method an access modifier of public, you're basically saying that they are accessible from anywhere outside of the class. You can see that we have a property of public name. So if we go outside of our code and instantiate our object user, so let's say new user, and if we set variable user equal to, well, variable user pointer name equal to Dari, and let's echo out this piece of text, save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that my name is printed out because our access modifier is equal to public. So we can use it outside of our class. The second access modifier is private. And whenever we define a private property, it can only be accessed from within the class itself. So if we change our property access modifier to private, and we save it and refresh the browser, you can see that we're getting an error because, well, we're trying to call it outside of our class, which is not possible. And the last one that I want to show you is protected. And this is pretty much the same as private, but there is one exception. And this is something that we will probably talk about later on, because what we will talk about is inheritance. So whenever we inherit a class, we can use a protected access modifier. If we change private to protected, the output will, well, the same, but private will be changed to protected. There's another way how we could actually access a private property, because eventually what we want is our properties to be private, to use getters and setters, but that is actually something that I won't be talking about right now, because I would like to dedicate a full video to it, which will be the next one. What we did right now was with properties, but we could do the same thing for methods. So let's create a private function called, called say hello. And let's um, return hello. And let's try to echo out user and say hello function. Save it, refresh the browser, and we cannot access the private property and protect it will probably be the same. So let's save it, refresh your browser, but well, we cannot access the property as well. You probably wonder why you shouldn't set all the access modifiers to public because it looks, well, way easier. But it is very important to know what access modifiers to use because you don't want your code to be accessible from outside the code if it's not necessary. You have to provide methods to access them in order to separate the interface of your class from the actual implementation. And other code that uses your class does not need to know the name of the class members. So whenever we create a block, we need users to log in. So we need a class user and the class posts for our blog posts. We don't want our post class to have access to the properties of our user and vice versa. This was it for this episode about access modifiers. And in the next episode, I want to work on inheritance in PHP. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.